Hey friends, Jill and Nathan here. Welcome back to a Spring Mellow Farms. We are setting out under the pavilion, sweating our hineys off. We had a lovely rain shower pretty much all day it has rained. And now it is muggy and hot. <laughs> She's got me sitting out here. And I have him sitting out here for a very important reason. We wanted to walk you guys around the farm. We've been getting asked a lot of questions as far as what are we gonna do with our new farm, with our new space. So I thought it'd be fun if we kind of walked you guys around the farm tonight and kind of shared our vision with you of what we see this place being. Now granted, we are wild dreamers, so a lot of things that we're saying um, probably aren't going to happen anytime soon. Like these are very long term uh, goals and dreams, they're pretty lofty goals and dreams, some of them. However, I do believe it's important to cast vision. I believe it's important to share our dreams with you guys. There's that level of accountability. Um, I don't know, I just think it's good to openly talk about what you're dreaming and you're uh, hoping for. And so that's kind of what we're gonna do. So one thing that you guys have been asking a lot, and I kind of touched on it um, in my video earlier this week, um, and that is what animals we're gonna have on the farm, what animals we want to have on the farm. You guys know we wanna have quite a few animals. Uh, however, we're gonna take this in stages. We are taking on more land, we're taking on more growing space than we ever have. Um, so when we talk about these animals, this isn't something that we're gonna immediately get out and get. We're gonna try to get our fill for the space first um, and just growing food on this scale. And then we'll probably start adding that in. But I'm gonna let Nathan talk about kind of some of the animals he foresees us having on the farm. Uh, we can even walk around and look at where you want those animals if that's gonna look like how they had it look in the paddocks or just kind of what's going to be different there. Okay. I mean, obviously the first animal I think we're going to bring back uh, are the rabbits. You know, yeah. we just uh, didn't want to build cages and keep rabbits in cages anymore. And so um, we had some friends of ours out, Jacob and Lacey, the other day. And Jacob is who we buy our rabbits from. And he made a really good suggestion. You know, we really want to do a rabbit colony. Um, and he kept, he kind of helped me narrow down a couple possibilities of where to put that colony. Yeah. Um, you know, where I wanted to put it, um, he pointed out some, some things that I didn't realize and I don't think it's going to be a good thing. So yeah. I, th I think we've got a, a spot picked out. So obviously one of the first things we'll probably bring, mm -hmm. bring on is rabbits. Yeah. We could even walk back there and show them because I have mentioned that several times. Nathan wanted the rabbits where they had the turkeys um, and it is open. So they would be, if you did a colony, um, all those aerial predators like hawks would be really bad problem and there's not a lot of shade. Wasn't that like the main issues he was saying? The shade, yes. Um, and there's not any grass in there right now and you know we want to establish some grass so um, but the main thing was the um, it just wasn't fully shaded. Yeah. All right so do you want to walk back there and we can show them where you're thinking of doing the rabbit colony and we can talk about the other animals that you're wanting to add on? Sure. Nathan can't really ask my opinion on animals because if it were up to me I would have Old McDonald's farm. <laughs> So I don't really get a huge say on the animals. Um, obviously we talk about it, but if it were up to me, I would have every animal like right now. And so obviously that's not the smartest thing to do. So I'm kind of leaving Nathan in charge of what animals we're gonna have, when we're gonna have them. All right, so way back there, I'm not sure you guys will be able to see it. That was their turkey run. That was originally where we we're gonna put them. You can see there's that big open space back there where there are no trees, where hawks could easily fly down and you know get them and that's less than ideal so we're gonna be moving back here and that's where we're gonna show you guys behind the high tunnel behind the high tunnel okay all no. right lay it on me all right so jacob suggested underneath this tree uh, which provides plenty of shade um, obviously we've got to get some grass established here um, something we're going to work on here in the next couple weeks but mm -hmm. Uh, essentially what we're going to do is kind of fence off a pretty large area and we're going to put sheet metal in the ground six inches at least maybe a foot all the way around so they can't dig out mm -hmm. um, but just put a bunch of dirt 
in there and grass seed and let them make their own little colony. Yeah, so there's the tunnel. So it's right, this is where they had um, their pigs. Was it their female pigs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is where they had their pe their female pigs. Their male pigs were over there in that back paddock. So we won't, like you said, we're gonna just fence this off. It won't be the whole area, correct? No, it won't be the whole area. It'll yeah. just be probably 20 by 20, okay. four, 400 square feet. Okay. So. All right, so the rabbits will be the first animal. We have been talking to Ginger over at Murray McMurray. Uh, Nathan really wants some ducks. And so we'll be getting some ducks and we are gonna add some more chickens to our flock this spring. Um, chickens are gonna stay where they are. They have a beautiful chicken coop. I love that little area. It'd be nice to put the dogs out there with them. So rabbits, some more chickens, some ducks. What else are you thinking? Like how far in the future are we talking here? <laughs> I don't like to put a timeline. Let's say, let's give like our three to five year plan, which is, this is not a like, we haven't really talked about this. This I was, was like, she loves putting me <laughs> on the spot here. No, I mean. like we have vaguely talked about, and I've been having a lot of people ask like, what are you gonna do? And I thought, well, let's kind of give an overview of just, <clears throat> we're spitballing, okay? None of this is set in stone. These are the things we've been talking to. Don't hold us to any of these things, okay? If in two years you're like, you said you were gonna put the rabbits there and you didn't. This is us thinking out loud and bringing you guys along for the ride. Um, so yeah, I don't, wanna, I don't need any pressure, you guys, because this could all change, right? This is just us thinking about the future. This is a conversation Nathan and I would have over a cup of coffee in the morning. And we are bringing you guys along to join in on this conversation. So it may change, but Right now, what are some other animals you'd like to bring into the farm? Oh, uh, definitely hogs. Mm. You know, um, I uh, I want to raise my own pork. You know, other than hogs, I mean goats. Um, I wouldn't mind having just a couple, <laughs> not milk goats. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm working on him, guys. Okay, so where would you put the pigs? Since this is where the pigs were, and you're going to section some of this off, would you have them up there where they had separate? You know, had their males. Or would you, can you put, could the females go along here if you had a, like an area mapped out for the rabbits? Or? I haven't gotten that figured out yet. Okay. That's something uh, I'll probably bring in somebody that knows a little okay. more than I, uh, to help me out with that. But. Okay. So we're still thinking through off the top of our heads, rabbits, you know, eventually we want a hog or two. Um, like he said, we do have a lot of good people. I doubt we will get mangalisas. They're really good for charcuterie, but we eat a lot of pork. So we would want it for like pork chops and you know, stuff like that. So that we'd probably pick a different breed. I'm not really sure yet. We love your suggestion. So if you guys know some that are really good um, for just like cuts of pork and not for like, you know, uh, curing, we would love to know that. So we could spend our time researching and figuring out which ones we'd want to implement on the farm. That's pretty much all the animals as of now. Like I said. Jill would have an elephant. I don't know that I would have an elephant. I would have a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> Elephants are <laughs> they're a little intimidating. Uh, so one thing as far as, that's probably it with the animals we have mentioned, we're gonna spend a lot of time just building up grass. So we live on a ridge and Jessica has mentioned several times, she doesn't grow grass, she grows rock. That is nothing that Jess and Maya have done. It's just the property itself and that is true. I mean, there are huge rocks out here um, just because it is a ridge. And so that's gonna take Nathan being super intentional on planting and planting and planting a grass seed and just hoping that it sticks and works. So we're probably gonna spend the first several months just trying to figure out if we can get grass to grow, what that looks like, um, buying minerals, putting minerals back into the soil. There's a lot of like leg work that needs to be done before we ever even think about bringing the first animal back on the farm. Aside from the chickens, um, they're pretty much okay in the area that they are in. We're gonna have some work days and um create a sign up form so be sure and uh, come out and help us pick up oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll provide food, <laughs> provide food. <laughs> that's usually the deals that we make with our friends like if you come help us we'll feed you all right so over here is the high tunnel that is obviously gonna stay right there and I'm gonna grow a lot of stinking food in there but over here 
is where they had their chickens and you can see things are growing in there this is also where they had their potatoes we are going to put my small greenhouse right here for seed starting because it makes a lot of sense what i'm starting in here will more than likely be going into the tunnel it may be a potato rip it up and see <laughs> nathan's finding potatoes so my small little greenhouse that my it's not really small i don't know what the size of it but my greenhouse that i started all my seeds in this year will go right here but I would love to have another greenhouse and have it on the other side of it. And what I'm kind of just like spitballing and thinking, you guys know we've been doing a lot with cut flowers. I'm gonna be continuing to do a lot with cut flowers. I thought it'd be really cool to have a tunnel full of flowers. Um, it's just totally different as far as you can start things earlier. The whole point of growing in a high tunnel is season extension. Um, and so I think it'd be really cool to have a tunnel not near as big as the tunnel right here, but one bigger than my greenhouse uh, that I'm starting seeds in just for flowers. Um, I think that that would be really, really awesome. So when I'm kind of cast in vision and figuring out like what I would want, I think this back half here just to be designated for tunnels would be really cool. Um, and then we've got the front raised bed garden and the small greenhouse. And then you come to the back part of the farm and then you have all the tunnels. For a teaching aspect too, in the future, I'd love to have like local workshops. And so I think it'd be really cool to have people onto our farm and be able to walk through a greenhouse where vegetables are grown, um, see how I start seeds, what that looks like, and then also be able to teach and show people about growing flowers in a tunnel. Um, and so that's kind of what I envision. I envision doing a lot of workshops, teaching a lot, and so I'm trying to build out uh, the farm that will accommodate that um, and that people would be able to learn and they could have a visual idea of what it is that we're doing. Another thing Nathan and I were just so excited about when we bought this property was being able to extend it to the community, you know? And so we would like to make part of the raised bed garden um, to where community members could come out. Uh, they could work in the garden. They could harvest the produce from the garden. We'll be donating most of that food, uh, which is something we're really, really excited about. I would really love to explore that a little more and see just the reach we could have with that and what that might look like in the future. So I know that that is something that we're really excited about uh, doing on the farm. Did you let the chickens out for the first time? <clears throat> We've had the chickens cooped up in the coop um, while we were getting them adjusted to the new place. Nathan just let them out, fed them some tomatoes. They are going to town over those tomatoes. Yeah, no. So yeah, everything in this area we envision being the same. A lot of you guys have asked us about uh, if we're going to have bees. They actually left us a beehive and we will be spending time doing research on that. I'd love to have more hives in the future. Um, but right now that's a little too involved for us. But we are going to keep the hive that they had. They lay any eggs? Oh, yeah. Oh, they did? Whoa. Do I trust to put them in my pocket? <laughs> Look at that beautiful green egg. Wow, that's pretty. So back at the old house, Nathan and I had a huge compost pile and then we had two compost bins uh, kind of set off around the house. That is something we really wanted to immediately work on was getting our own compost started here. Um, and so on the other side of the chicken coop is the raised bed garden. And as we were tearing out a lot of the raised bed garden, we brought it right here. And we've been trying to mulch it up. And so we are going to, what kind of is your plan for that? Like how do you plan on building out this compost bin? How big is it gonna be? I'm not sure, but every year when we go to rotate the garden or, or pull stuff up i want to shred it into here but also let the chickens go through it you know it's kind of mul multi-purpose so so we may like have walls but then have the front open where they can walk into yeah yeah i'll have i'll have walls probably wall off um from the back side so it doesn't seep into the back yeah. um but i want it wide enough 
So when you let me buy a tractor, I can come in and, <laughs> and scoop and it. Scoop yeah. It so right now we have a pretty big section you can see um, that we're using. So that is huge. That's num one of the number one things we really wanted to emphasize on was getting a compost pile started um, and start working on that because compost takes a really long time when you're just getting started just to let it all decompose all the necessary steps so that was something we definitely wanted to go ahead and start working on i'm seriously so afraid i'm gonna make an omelet in my pocket <laughs> i'm not sure i should have been trusted with these eggs all right so another thing we really wanted to talk to you about this was for me one of the reasons I was so excited about buying this farm, obviously the gardens was number one, right? Like I, what, I probably tripled, quadrupled my growing space mm -hmm. between this and the tunnel. So that was really exciting for me because I love gardening, that's my thing. Um, but another thing, you can hold them. I didn't trust myself. But another thing was Nathan and I are really passionate about community. And when I came out to this farm, even when it was just in Maya's farm, I always just envisioned all of the things you could do revolved around community here. And so Nathan and I would talk about that when we were looking at properties, when we would put in an offer on properties, that was the number one thing was kind of like how we can get the community involved in this. And if you see behind Nathan, what is that tree, an oak tree? Yes ma'am. It is the most beautiful oak tree. It provides so much shade, it's lovely. And so what Nathan and I envision is having a long farmhouse table put right here, string up those pretty little lights. <laughs> and then there's this beautiful mural um, that was painted, making this an outdoor kitchen and having this beautiful little farm to table experience. We could, you know, go harvest all the vegetables, bring them to the outdoor kitchen, cook and still conversate, have these farm to table dinners, really just invite our community into what we're doing. I'll never forget, Nathan and I went to a farm to table dinner. Goodness, this was years ago, wasn't it? So we had went to this farm to table dinner. Round Rock Farms. At Round, Round Rock Acres. Round Rock. Round Rock Acres years ago and they did this farm to table dinner and it wasn't much at all like for us to go we didn't we didn't spend a lot of money it wouldn't, yeah. yeah it wasn't much we had to drive away this farm was kind of out there in Clinton and so we drove there and you go up in this little barn and they had like all these refreshments and these drinks and you could walk around the farm while they cooked the dinner and you had these ladies in the barn that you could also cook in and they were cooking the dinner and we went through raspberry patches and we harvested raspberries and they gave you those little berry baskets and you could take it and fill up whatever you wanted grapes mm -hmm. raspberries strawberries blackberries like you name it you just munch on it and you take it home and then they had this huge farmhouse table smack dab in the middle and they bring you like this three course meal and everything was homemade. And then they let all of the farmers stand up who had something. So the people who raised the chicken, they got to stand up and introduce their farm and what they did and the people who had the bread and the vegetables. And it was so cool. We learned about so many different farms that night. And then they took you on a tractor ride and you got to ride through the vineyards. And like Nathan and I, well, like three years later, we're still talking about this experience. Mm -hmm. Cause it was the coolest was. thing. We we were just blessed to be able to to go. I mean, it was some friends of ours' parents, yeah. and uh, I think they said, "Hey, we've got like X amount of yeah. uh, tickets, mm -hmm. you know." And we happened to snag them, and yeah, that was just such a beautiful experience. It so. was, and we have talked about that so much. And I remember then we lived at our first house, so we had a one acre plot, but very few raised beds in the backyard. Like I was really like just starting to like, oh, I really want a garden. You know, like it was, that fire had finally been like ignited by that night. And I told Nathan, I was like, I want to do this. And so I envision just having this long table. I envision kids running around, looking at the animals, playing, running through the gardens, picking food. I envision having our guests walking through the gardens, harvesting foods. The cottage garden, I'd love to just fill that up with like berries and maybe even have a designated place on the farm where we've got all these different fruit trees and these established berries and 
just allow people to go and just soak in like the joy that comes from living this type of life. I think for me, it's about community. But I would love more than anything for someone to come to our farm and it sparks something in them that they didn't know they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And it encourages them to grow food. And that's really what I foresee is this farm just allowing us to have so much intentionality with our community in a very real way. And so I am honestly probably the most excited to see that happen. Me too. <laughs> we, got a ways, we got a ways to go, you know. <laughs> So I she just spurred this topic on me literally 10 minutes before she started shooting. So, do you not sit and like just think of and dream about all the things you want to do on this farm? No, I do. I do. I just that is all I do, y'all. I don't even sleep. Like, I'm just like you can ask Nathan. I wake up in the middle of the night so many times and grab my phone and just start putting notes in my phone. And it is like dreams, it's video ideas, it just never ends up there. And sometimes that's I'm a, a good dreamer, thing, but not to her extent yeah i just when she dreams i think about the work involved <laughs> to make it happen and so she's well, over here just dreaming away and i'm just lucky there. for you jeremiah has made a lot of these things already happen that's true that is so true. we are walking into a lot already that's right so i'm Thank thankful you, which allows me to dream even more because he's already done half the stuff <laughs> <laughs> now it is going to take a while i do recognize that but I think that's what keeps me moving forward is knowing that I am working towards a goal. I am working towards bringing my community together. I'm working to have a better platform to teach you guys on, teach you different styles of gardening, different styles of raising animals. Like that's my goal too is like, I'm not just doing this for my family, which I am. That is the number one driving factor while I'm doing this. I'm doing this for my community members. I'm doing this for you guys. I'm doing this to spark that in somebody that didn't know they wanted to live this lifestyle to think, oh, well, if you can do it, I can do it. I want someone to come to my farm and have that experience like we had that one night touring that farm. It changed everything for me. I want to do that for someone else. So yeah, I'm going to dream the crazy things. We're going to work our little heinies off one day at a time taking that next step, doing that next thing. I do know that this isn't gonna happen overnight, right? Like I do have some lofty dreams, I recognize that. But I do think that if we hold ourselves accountable to those goals, we share those goals with you guys, we work through those, like towards those goals slowly, one day at a time, one week at a time. I do think we'll get there. I think we will too. I will too. And I'm excited to take you guys on the journey. I'm honored to have the privilege to dream out loud with you guys. <laughs> um, I know that it's a lot sometimes. I know I spitball a lot. Um, but I do, like I said, think there's a lot of value in talking to you guys about what we want to envision here. And that doesn't look like going around changing a ton of things. That looks like adding our personal touches on it. You know, respecting what they've already put so much work into and really just kind of building upon that. All right. Well, I'm not sure if you can tell by the glistening on our faces, but <laughs> Nathan's drenched in sweat. It's hot out here, folks. Uh, so we are going to head inside. Thank you guys so much for walking around the farm with us, dreaming with us, casting vision for the future. Uh, thank you guys so much. We'll talk to you soon.